Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Sane Logic wireless weather station with outdoor sensor. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I have a number of different weather stations and they're nice and all, but they don't have as many features as this one. This one has an anemometer, which is a wind sensor. It has a rain gauge on it. That's a really important one, especially as we're getting into gardening. It's nice to know how much it rains so we know how much to water. This also has temperature and humidity. So let's get this opened up. Here's a warranty registration card. It's a quick setup guide. This talks about installing the batteries in the transmitter. It takes three AA batteries. It has a plug-in adapter for the indoor console, and it can also run off batteries. So I prefer to plug it in when I can so I don't have to mess with batteries on the inside. This section talks about verifying the sensors, and here are some mounting options here. So this comes with a mounting pole. So you can mount this to a horizontal surface. You can mount it to a vertical surface. Looks like you can mount it to a pole or a pipe there, or you can mount it to a stake. So there are many options for mounting this. And here's the main user manual. Not going to go over every part of this, but I'll flip through it real quick. So it looks pretty thorough. So this would be the receiver here. So this takes three AAA batteries and the barrel jack to plug it in is down here. So this has a kickstand on it or it has some slots so you can hang this from a wall. Here's the transformer. Output on this is 5.9 volts at 0.5 amps. Here's some of the mounting hardware. So this can clamp onto something and we have the slots here to put the pole in. Here is the weather transmitting unit. You can see the reset button here, temperature, humidity. We have the rain gauge here. So this is a self-emptying rain gauge, which is really nice. So as the water drips through here, there's a little teeter-totter in there and it's going to go back and forth and that gauges the rain. So you don't have to empty this. Now you will potentially have to clean this on occasion. So if I open this up, you can see the teeter-totter there. And here's the mounting pole, and here's mounting hardware. So I'll get everything spread out here. So this pole will go in here, like so. And then this can mount depending on how you want to mount it. So it could mount like this if you want to mount it on a stake in the ground or if you want to screw it to some wood. Okay, so I have some batteries for the transmitter. I'll open up the little battery compartment here. I have three AA batteries. Now it recommends using lithium if it's cold out. It's summertime right now, so I'll put these in, but I'll probably switch these to lithium for the winter. And the lithium would be like the Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries. So those are very good quality batteries. Okay, I'll plug in the receiver. So this does have a film on the front of it. Okay, so I wanted to add a little bit about the batteries. I added three AAA batteries to the receiver here. That way, if the power goes out or something, this still works. So I did that for backup battery, and you could power it off that, but I'm going to keep it plugged in, obviously. And then this has a solar panel here. So this will power the unit when you have sun, and then when you don't have sun, like at night, it will use the batteries. But these do not charge the batteries. So that's an important thing to know, is that solar will work during the day, these will work at night. This will make the batteries last longer, but it does not charge them. So it looks like we're getting indoor and outdoor temperature, and it says they should be within four degrees Fahrenheit of each other, and they are. We're at 70 and 71, and humidity is at 57 and 73. Those should be within 10% of each other. Now, it can take a while for those to normalize, so I suspect those all get closer to each other over time inside, but I'll be moving this outside. So let's verify some things work here. I'll move the vein here. I'll have it one direction. I'll move it another direction. So this is only transmitting around every 16 seconds, I think it is. So, and I do want to show here that there is a level on top for when you mount this. But now I'll turn the air meter, the anemometer. So we should see activity here. There we go. We have the wind speed, okay. Now I'll unscrew the rain gauge and I'll simulate rain by rocking this back and forth. And that's showing up down here. Okay, it looks like everything's working. So I'm going to go get this mounted outside and then we'll take a more detailed look at this. Okay, so I have this mounted here on these monkey bars on this playground equipment. This doesn't get used very often. I may move it someday, but for now, I think this will work. So I've clamped this on here and then I've oriented this so the solar panel here is to the south, so that will pick up the sun. So you can see this is rotating freely and this is rotating freely now. This will collect water and it will drain out the bottom and we have our temperature sensor here. Okay, so now I have the sensor set up. So this is reading now. So this has a backlight on it and you can press the snooze button to change the backlight level. So it has three levels, high, medium, low. If you want to turn the backlight off, you can hold this down. 
and it will turn the backlight off. And then if we press it again, it will turn on, think for five seconds, and then I think it will turn off again. Let's see if it does that. Now when you have it in battery mode, it will automatically do that. So when you have it plugged in, the backlight will normally be on all the time. So if we press it, now it comes on for a short amount of time. If we want to turn the backlight on, we'll hold this down again. And now the backlight will stay on. So I want this on full brightness. So I'm not giving a full tutorial on how to use this, but I'm going to go over some of the features. The manual is very good at explaining how to use this whole thing. So if we look at the top, we have min, max, minus, snooze light, and then channel plus. And then on the side, we have set and alarm. So if I press set, that will toggle through different modes. And then I can press the plus minus to look at different things. So this is the date. So we can toggle through and look at the day of the week, the year, things like that. Then we'll hit that again. And now we have rainfall. So we have one hour, total, month, week. 24 hour press it again and we have relative humidity and absolute humidity and then we have temperature we have feels like dew point temp looks like we have three things feels like dew point and temp so i think those are all the modes and then we can hold the set down for i think three seconds or so and then we'll go into this mode where we can change things so we have 12 hour time we can change that to 24 hour time we have the time of the day so it's currently around I don't know, nine o'clock, I think. So this is pretty basic. I'm hitting set to go between the modes. So I went through those quickly, but you can read through the manual to see exactly what every single setting is. So this thing is just chock full of information here. We have the year, we have the time, we have the day of the week, we have the moon phase, we have the wind direction and speed here. We have the gust and average speed. Here we have the conditions. In the middle here we have the, I think that's the forecast, or they call it the weather tendency indicator. Below that we have our barometer and we have our rainfall. So I'll probably change that to 24 hours or something because I really want to know if we need to say water the garden. And we have our temp sensor outside and this is showing the trend so it's trending up it's getting hotter then we have the relative humidity is 59 percent and that is steady then we have indoor temperature is 77 and that's steady relative humidity inside is steady and this clears every 24 hours as it says right here so this also has alarms on it and it has lots of alarms on it i was impressed with how many alarms so here are all the alarms here you can set two time alarms wind gust alarm wind average outdoor temperature outdoor humidity outdoor feels like temperature dew point hourly rainfall 24 hour rainfall absolute pressure, relative pressure, indoor temperature, and indoor humidity. So an example of where you might want to use this is could be the wind gust alarm. So you have a pop-up canopy outside that you don't want to use if the wind gets too high. You could set an alarm for that, and if the wind gets high, this will alert you, and then you can go out and take down your canopy. There's other things, like if the temperature drops, you might want to cover some plants in your garden. There are many use cases for this feature. So to set alarms, we'll press the alarm button here. That'll take us into alarm mode. Press and hold the set button three seconds. So we'll press through the set button here. That goes through alarm one, alarm two. And then here we have the high speed alarm for the wind, the average alarm. So you can press through here and change all of these alarms. I'll press alarm again, it goes to the second alarm mode. I'll press it again, we'll go back to the default mode. So as you can see, Tons of features on this thing for alarms. And here's a list of all the different alarms you can set. So I don't have any specific needs for alarms today, but I can't say I won't in the future. So I'll use this a bit and if a need for alarm comes up, I'll set it. So you can also calibrate this. Most people will not want to do that, but if you're interested, it does talk about how to do that in the manual. And this talks about the weather icons. It has an icon, it says the pressure is rising and previous condition is partly cloudy. So it shows the difference in these modes. And then we have moon phases and things like that. So for maintenance on this, you need to change the batteries in the transmitter every year or two. They also recommend cleaning out the rain gauge cup every three months. Now, if you have an area where you're gonna have lots of seeds, you may do that every week. Other people might live in places where they never need to do it. But you know, just check it regularly to make sure that water can move through it. And to change that, you just rotate it like I showed earlier and it pops right off there. So that's the same logic wireless weather station. I love the feature set of this. My other weather stations are limited to things like temperature, humidity, and barometer. And that's fine, but this takes it up the next level with the rain gauge and the wind gauge. And those are both very useful things. Rain is important because a lot of us water our lawns and gardens and things like that, so it's nice to know how much it rained. And then also wind is important. When I want to do some recreation outside, maybe go kayaking or bicycling, it's nice to know what the wind is doing. Or even hiking. If it's super windy out, I'm not going to want to go hiking because it can be kind of dangerous. And we've had some pretty big storms blow through in the past couple of years. It'll be interesting to see how fast that wind is actually blowing at our house because I always see on TV that we had 50 mile an hour wind gusts or things like that. So now I'll be able to tell on my property what the wind was like. So that's 
that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.